Ow! That sounded like James Brown. Ow! I feel good. <laughs> I feel good if it's working. I am not uh, the best technically, but I guess it's working. Hi, everybody. It's me, Craig Shoemaker. You know that because you must have signed up for something. All the technical stuff, I'm just out. It's just not my jam. I hopefully have people that help me and surround me with that. I do know what I'm doing with storytelling, with sharing experiences, with making people laugh. Been doing that a very long time since, uh, well, since grade school. I was uh, first joke. I'll tell you my first few jokes. Get this thing started. Make you smile. That's how to get. That's how to get your day going. By the way, people meditate. I get it. I meditate, but the entire time I'm meditating, it's too quiet for me. And I'm thinking the whole time. I'm thinking, oh my god. Oh, you got a bill to pay. What? I wonder what she would look like naked. I mean, these are the distractions that go through my head when I'm meditating. So I have a thing called laughitation. By the way, I need to laughitate that I have the sneezes this morning with my big. She's. Oh, man, don't say bless you. I don't believe in that. It's so silly. Bless you. What are you blessing the person for? I mean, they're, they're supposedly your heart stops. I'll bless you if you're coughing because you have a much better chance of death with the cough. And as a matter of fact, sneezing, it's the same, it's the same chemical reaction as an orgasm. Did you know that? So if you're going to say bless you, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> Good for you for having an orgasm. It's been a while for me. So, yeah, bless me. I just had one. I'm so sorry. I do have the sniffles. What? What? Maybe Maybe I'll do a chuckle chatter to get rid of that. Start your day with chuckling, smiling, and just watch what happens. I'll give you a little chuckle chatter. We're going to do one in a few weeks, but I'll show you how it works. You giggle as you're saying just something like you, you did that day. Ready? <laughs> At me laughing, you're starting to laugh and smile. It's contagious. It's how it works. You're setting a new vibration, a new energy. So watch this. <laughs> I know you chuckled over me. I woke up today <laughs> and I took a shower. <laughs> I shampooed my head. <laughs> but I forgot to put conditioner. <laughs> I shave in the shower <laughs> with soap. <laughs> and people keep telling me soap's not good for me, but I'm too cheap to buy the good stuff. So I take it from hotel rooms around the country. <laughs> there you go. There's my chuckle chatter. And ha. See how you center? I hope that you just had a little chuckle based on my stupid little day so far. I had some water. I could talk about that. I, whatever it is, innocuous things. What, you're literally changing your vibration when you laugh. This is what I encourage you to do, and it helps in all relationships as well. That's the discussion today, is how you can change your relationships if they're rooted in laughter. Laughter, joy, levity, light. It's who you truly are. It's how we're born. We we're born in light, levity, laughing till the parents take over, the teachers take over, society takes over. And then they say, no, 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 no more laughing. Wipe that smile off your face. What are you laughing at? Don't be so silly. That's silly. That's silly thinking. We're going to start a laughter movement. We are in a laughter movement. We have the control now. They don't control us anymore because if you haven't found it out by now, all the compliance, all the getting in line for them, all the rewards and rewards and all that stuff, the pins and the, the A's and the B's and the B pluses or whatever it is, or F's, it didn't do you any good in life. This did not raise your level. You're not uplifted from it because it's all based on their opinion of you. Other people's opinions of you will serve no good purpose in your life. As a matter of fact, it takes you down because most people project their own crap onto you. I've had people recently, they give me their opinion. I'm like, I'm not asking for this. This is just a projection of your own stuff. 
So we can now project light, levity, joy, happiness. We can project that onto others in all relationships. And it works. I'll give you some examples. Relationship with parents, that's a big one. So same with me. People have seen my act. You might know my dad left when I was born. I still have a relationship with him, though, all through the years. And uh, my mom, I had very difficult times with my mom. Like most children do, especially a child that didn't have a dad and you blame mom and she's the only one there. So that's it. So I had a real rough time with my mom. And uh, I got into show business. I thought maybe she'd be happy. It's the opposite. She's not happy that I'm talking about her. And it's like, why can't you be a singer? The singers sing other songs about other people. Not many people sing songs about their mom. It's a little little Oedipus like so so my mom always wanted me to do something else but even acting where you're doing other people's lines but not comedy wasn't encouraged to do that but laughter was always encouraged and with laughing at ourselves laughing at ourselves being self-deprecating in Philadelphia you call it self-defecating we we shit on ourselves anyway so my mom give me an example of I really always wanted her to love me. It's how I got into comedy. It's like, you know, I thought I'd find love through comedy and laughter. And uh, and I have. That's been the whole secret to my life is, is this laughter. I cannot believe I have a runny nose on this day. Whew, man, unbelievable. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> the last thing I want to do is bring a tissue up to my nose during this presentation. <laughs> so I'll laugh about it. So give you an example i was i won this big award and um, my mom loves show business and uh, i live three thousand miles away she's in philadelphia and uh this is the love master movie uh won the independent film festival in los angeles it's a pretty cool fifteen thousand people robin williams is backstage i said robin would you talk to my mom uh she loves celebrities and, and I said, uh, she's in Philadelphia. Would you talk to her? Oh, yes. Oh, I will. Love Master's mother. Oh, she have a big penis. <laughs> anyway, so I said, thanks, Robin. So I call her up. I said, Mom, guess what? I'm standing here with Robin Williams who's going to talk to you. And my film just won the Independent Film Festival. Can you believe it? And there's this pause. She goes, that's very nice, Craig. You know not to call me during Jeopardy. I got to go. As she's hanging up, I hear, who is Anwar Sadat? She got one in to go against my stepfather. So then I uh, I was just standing there, just, you're going to be kidding me. And Robin Williams, I said, she hung up on me, Robin. He goes, I understand. I guess he understands where we come from. A lot of us come from pain. Everyone comes from pain. We all have pain. How do you manage the pain? How do you manage the pain? I say, take it down the laughter stairs, fall down the stairs, laugh about it. This is what pain, how it's managed better. Because if we stay in that pain, in that space, what do you want to live for? I've mentioned before, my friend had brain cancer and we started Laughter Heals based on Michael Goldberg having brain cancer, gave him three months to live. He had a reason to live was laughter. And he lived 15 years past the prognosis with brain cancer because he had a reason and a purpose to live. You don't have much purpose if you still stay in these negative spaces and analyzing people and gossiping about people. That's not a way to build relationships. But you can take these difficulties and turn them around and shift. There's a lot of what I'm teaching lately, it's, and I just love it. I'm, the results are extraordinary. I'm having people of all different businesses, all different walks of life, move their life into a positive direction by learning how to alchemize their own humor and turn it into gold. Everyone's funny. Everyone could be funny. I think I've, I've got to sneeze again. Oh, this is unbelievable. I'll have to laugh about this. <laughs> unbelievable. By the way, that's another thing I, want, I must tell you. Being around laughter really, really works. These comedians... There's so many comedians live a really, really long life by being surrounded by the vibration of laughter. Hold on. Ah! You can bless me. <laughs> I believe it. I believe 
nose spray, and the nose spray made it worse. God, so professional. I'll laugh about it. Here I am doing a professional, what is this called, a webinar? <laughs> I'm sneezing, and all of a sudden, the allergies are popping up during my freaking presentation here. Hopefully, you're not sickened by it, but it's not contagious. By the way, laughter is so good for you. What it does for you, it's literally the greatest healer there is. I don't understand why we don't go down that direction more. It's a medicine. It's for mind, body, and spirit. Your mental wellness really is predicated upon how happy you are having more laughter in your life. And I will teach you how to find more laughter and, and initiate more laughter, inspire more laughter. It's easy to do. Just have to go down these steps that I've created for you, for me, for everyone. And it changes the vibration. So back to my mom. So my mom, I was um, in a space of, I just like, I just let it go. I said, and we didn't talk for six years. Six years of no speaking. I was just like, oh, she doesn't like me. She, she's, uh, she's just, uh, you know, maybe she hates men or whatever it is. And. This is just what I just clarified it as that. That's it. I'm okay. You know, if she dies, I'll be all right. I did the best I could, but the best son I could be, and all that kind of stuff. I just let it go. And then one day, and I had reasons, by the way. She wasn't a mom. You know, I was like, what kind of mom would do blank, blank, blank? I won't get into it. But it was really stuff that other people would say, wow, that's really a crappy mom right there. So one day I was cleaning out the, my garage and I found, I used to say, oh, she never says I love you. I was, I was cleaning out the garage and I found these old CDs from a radio show that I did in Charlotte. And uh, my mom would call in. She had a segment called What's Bugging Barb? And it was so hilarious. I'm listening. Oh, my God, I was dying. I laughed. I called the kids in who don't really know her. They didn't know her at all. And I said, come on in here. Listen to Nana. And we were howling laughing. And she coincidentally was coming to California that uh, that weekend, not to see us. That's the other thing. I was like, how come she doesn't put me as a priority? It was, I was never a priority growing up, and I got really angry about that and resentful. <laughs> so I, uh, I said, listen to this. And I realized at that moment, wow, she gave me the gift of laughter. And this is a great gift that we should all bequeath onto others. I thought about it. I said, my sense of humor is all because of my mom. And my sense of humor has literally fed me for my entire life. Not only fed me financially from doing all the comedy, but it's fed my, my true self. My true essence has been fed by this nutritious food my entire life of which my mom, my mom just, that was her thing was she was always finding these laughs and things. And she, even if it's like stuff that's her quirks that she shares and it's what's bugging Barb, she would call up the radio station. And I was thinking, is it only me finding her funny? No, everyone found her funny. It was a great segment. And she ended the segment, the radio. And this is what I went, Oh, wow. Well, you really had a different perspective. Love you. That's what she would say at the end. I guess I was wrong on that one. So here I had all these resentments that I had built up all these reasons why I shouldn't speak to her. We kept that silent thing going, which is what she did it. I did it. And then it just shifted. It all stopped on that, that day. And what came up for me in my silence and listening to this messenger that's within all of us, this light, this ethereal message, this, this higher source said, forgive her and also get into radical acceptance. Uh, I'd go through the laughter acronym when I work with people and the A is for acceptance. What do you not accept? So I got into radical acceptance of who she truly is and everything shifted that day. Everything. She could literally call me and say, you're the worst person I've ever met. And I would go, <laughs> it's okay. Because I put so much meaning to everything. So now I just accept her for who she truly is. And in doing so, I created something new. With us, it's fresh. I can't wait to talk to her all the time. She calls me with more buggins and she writes me. Here, I'll show you. By the way, I do a really good impression of my mom. 
So here, here's my mom. Here's a letter from my mom. See, she, she writes little cursive notes and sends me these. Yeah, she says, <laughs> so, well, Craig, before I tell you what's bugging me, first I want to tell you an idea I stumbled across, a great invention. Let me explain. Last night I went to P.F. Chang's and afterwards on my way to the car, I kept smelling the odor from my dinner. I thought to myself, that was so good. I'm still smelling it. Then this morning I went out shopping and there was that odor again. Well, here some of the spring roll from my dinner had fallen into my mask. Then I had an idea. Why not make scented masks? <laughs> People wearing masks always look so miserable. This would give them something to cheer them up. The possibilities are endless. Not only a food scent, you could use candle scents, even pheromones, a lilac for Easter. Come to think of it, for people who never stop eating, you, you could put little food pockets inside the masks, and they could graze on food all day like a horse's feed bag. <laughs> we share these moments together all the time now, and I cherish them. And you can too. All relationships, if they're based in humor, can sustain and be scalable. They always say women want a sense of humor, by the way. I read those in magazines. But it's true. I mean, we all fall apart. You know, I'm going to be Brad Pitt our entire lives or Charlize Theron. It all starts to go. So if you're leading with the looks, yeah, fine. You might get but what's going to take you all the way is laughter. It's how we bond, our best friends. And you can always find a bright side and a light side. I'm going to talk about that in, in a second here. I'm going to go off camera on this. <laughs> I hate this. That's life. As soon as you plan something, God's got another plan. So I wanted to talk about something that was really – and I – thought about this recently. It was a really low point in my life. And we all have them. Eighth grade, we had moved again. We used to move a lot. We had no money. We we're very poor. And we moved in this area where I wanted to be loved. I wanted to bond with guys. I never had a man in my life, you know, like a dad, father figures. So I went out for the football team for Enfield Junior High School. And this transfer to Enfield was a really rough one because I had to go from Hillcrest, seventh grade, over to eighth grade, same general neighborhood, but it was a different school, the rival school. Not accepted, you know, and we're in another rental home and I didn't know anyone. So I go out for this one 15 pound football team. I weighed 72 pounds. I was very tiny in eighth grade. And not only was I not accepted, I was literally beaten. I'd be in the huddle. I played center so I could touch the ball all the time. And also nobody wanted to play center. So I said, okay. And the quarterback would literally, as he released me from the huddle, he would, he would punch me in the face. I was, and I, I would always hold back tears. And I'd go up to the line and get the ball, hike the ball. We're undefeated, but you would never know that because I was defeated constantly. He would beat me up, and then they would get me in the locker room. This was a visual that I just came up with the other day. I mean, it was a, a gang assault. They took me and just beat me and pulled my underwear up till I was literally bleeding. Uh, wedgies trying to hang me from a locker to make wind chimes. Bang your legs together. And it was like a coyote wilding. They got a hold of me and just, just threw me all over the room, all over the locker room. And they did this continually to the point where I had no underwear. I was so embarrassed and so filled with shame that I um, would hide this from my mom. I had just strings for underwear and we couldn't afford new underwear. And it was really like a very low moment in my life. And I came up with this the other day. I thought, oh my God, it's just, it was really, I didn't know who to go to because they would beat me up. They would, they would come into my house after me and no protection. And Here's what happens in life. I also had something brilliant happen that same year. I met my best friend. And we bonded through laughter. Dave Cerami. We're in class together. And everything that we do is all about having fun. 
from the moment we, and we were bad kids together that started with that. And he's my best friend to this day. And we're like brothers. We even look alike. So that's what can happen for you as well. No matter what the conditions, no matter what the circumstances are, they can all shift if we take it into a positive, light-filled way and bond with people in relationships. And by the way, the other ones, like those guys that beat me up, they're not my life. I can't empower them or anyone like that who's ever trying to take me down or ever tries to take you down. Bye. See you later. I don't need you, but I do need to be around people that make me laugh and I have fun with. This is, a, this is a lot of the foundation of what I teach and how I live my life. I'm going through some difficult circumstances now, and I still do laffitations, guided laffitations. I created that in a cancer facility to help my friend who lived the, outlived the prognosis of the doctors. We, If we really, really work on our conditioning, reconditioning thoughts and reconditioning things we've been programmed with into a space of levity, light, Laughter, joy, grins, giggles, guffaws. If we concentrate more of our energy in that direction, the other people kind of fall away. We don't watch the news anymore because all they're doing is keeping us in fear. We have the power to get over those fears by coming together. So a lot of what I am doing is creating a movement. This is a movement that we can all be part of. Now, there's specific people I've been working with and getting amazing testimonials. I do individual work. If you're interested in that, please contact me. I love the individual work. I have some people that want to be stand-ups. They're, they're not really a stand-up now, but I'm taking them to that. I have people in real estate that just want to do better business. Because think about when you laugh with people. Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> oh. <coughs> That's ugly. Don't say bless you. <laughs> <laughs> we're conditioned to think, oh, we're supposed to say bless you. I always question part of what I teach is curiosity. I think, why do we have certain habits that we developed, things that have been passed down to us? Oh, my goodness. I believe with timing on this. So our sense of humor is our sense of self. Let's develop our sense of self. Uh, even in the professional realm, my first job job, I've been doing stand-up since I was junior of high school, put myself through college and everything, all from humor, creating this space. Each show that I do, a new space is created. It's amazing to see the results. People that have come up and said literally saved their lives or gotten them through some pain, and even if it's temporary, wow, what a wonderful thing. My mom gave me that gift, by the way. So I appreciate her all the time. I call my mom all the time, and we just have so much fun now. And if she starts on some way, pushing buttons, as they say, it doesn't matter. Just let it go. I also have bonding still with my friend Cerami from eighth grade. We're still the best of friends, and God, we laugh together. A lot of the stories are old. You know, spouses and friends are tired of hearing them, but we don't care. We just have such a great time together. So... This all started, I worked in a law firm, very serious law firm, one of the top firms in Philadelphia, Schneider, Harrison, Siegel, and Lewis, and I worked there to put myself through college as a clerk, messenger, and I performed in the lunchroom. I would do, not perform, but I would do impressions of people. I'll give you a couple of my first impressions. Uh, Jimmy Stewart, you know, from It's a Wonderful Life. Jimmy Stewart is a horse race announcer. Well, well, the, 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 the horses, they're, they're down there in the gate. They're ready to go. And they're off. Well, he's up. Uh, well, you got the, you, you, there, you, well, but Mr. Ed wins by a leg. That's my first, one of my first impressions that I would do in the, in the lunchroom. But I would do Mr. Mullenix, Mr. Lewis. I would imp do impressions of Sal, the messenger, and made people laugh in that lunchroom. And Jim Mardinley, who had long fingernails because he had these are his guitar picks, he says, I'm performing with my band this weekend. Would you like to go do comedy? Comedy. Hmm. So I said, sure. And that was it. And uh, it was Sandy Supper Club. It's in 107 degrees in humidity in Philadelphia. 
and it was in West Philadelphia. And I got a laugh and it was like crack. You know what it's like when you get a laugh from someone. <clears throat> That's a dopamine hit. That is healing. You're creating an entire other energy. You have a, now a genuine energy flow that's you. That's the true you. You love to laugh. You love to be in joy, right? And he got me started. He passed away last year. and um, But I will never forget Jim Martinley. From, for, and I, I could thank him forever. So grateful that then that led to me doing comedy, which led to laughter for literally... It's over McDonald's numbers, you know, the amounts of laughs. He can combine everyone. And, and what a life we can all live. You can do the same thing. You don't have to be a professional comedian. You can create that space and have better relationships. Even if you share your favorite movie, your favorite movie scene, if you just say, say what it is, you just created joy for someone. And I'll give you these methods of how to get there, all the little keys to get into genuine energy flow. So it was a very professional environment. That, that even the lawyers liked me because I was just making them laugh. It wasn't as a professional. They weren't paying a cover charge. They even invited me, 17-year-old kid. I played on their softball team with the lawyers, and, the, and we had fun there. Just create the fun. I'm actually training other fun facilitators for Laughter Heals to go into hospitals and places like that to create fun have games and laughter anyway that's going to do it for me today and i i don't know the technical stuff on what to do how to sign up or how to ask for more i don't get i guess samantha will help me with that um i just looked here it said amen no news you do not need the news the news is only created to sell you something to sell you band-aids for something that we can take care of at our root our root is joy our root is light let's go to that their root is darkness and they they lure you into there they entice you but if you ignore it my life is so much better move away from it take your energy into something positive i gotta sneeze i gotta go you guys are great thank you for for this um somebody says their mother listens to news non-stop is completely stressed out yes exactly right then uh, <laughs> Ugh, I should have ended before I sneezed. Anyway, <laughs> oh God, unbelievable. Look at the timing on this. I think the light does something too. Somebody tell me about that. Whenever I look into the light, I, I sneeze. Something about that. Maybe you can write me. By the way, Craig at CraigShoemaker.com. I answer all my own emails. Just get to me, talk to me, reach out to me. I'm here to help you. Have better relationships. Have a better life. Fill it with laughter. Yes, get away from the news. Then they have the commercials. It's all about insurance. How come we know all state mayhem? We know uh, the, 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 the lizard. We know flow the progressive. Why do we know this? Because they have all this money that they're spending on that instead of our premiums to keep you in that condition that you need insurance. You need them. And then the drug companies... They have all the drugs that will handle the anxiety that they just gave you and all the side effects that come with it. Think about that. We didn't grow up with any of those commercials, any of those commercials, and we were healthier. They're putting Band-Aids on a leper. Laughter, joy, this is great medicine. I trust me on this. All the studies show it. It oxygenates your body. Healing endorphins are released. Stress is relieved when you laugh. Think about it. I'll do one last chuckle chatter. <laughs> I sneezed and that sniffles the entire time. <laughs> there you go. I feel better even though I still have sniffles. All right. Have a wonderful day. Joy filled. Stay in touch. I hope you got a lot out of this today. And uh, trust me, if you... If you get on board, we're going to have a course coming up. And so some people have done other courses with me, the Enlightened Up course. <sighs> let's just let's just spread the laughter. Let's start a movement, all right? I'll see you later. End broadcast. How do I do this? Oh, my God. My mouse doesn't work. Have a great day. <laughs> ha! <laughs>